We are back now with an eyewitness news exclusive. Our series on policing in Connecticut continues. Protesters around the country are calling for police reform following the death of George Floyd. And here in Connecticut, Governor Lamont wants the General Assembly back for a special session tackling police transparency and accountability. So if that happens, what exactly could it look like? Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarlane sat down with one state legislator who's been focusing on this issue for years. The nation has responded in ways that it has not responded before. And, and people like myself who've been in this fight for decades are now in positions to help move us forward. And that's exactly what we're going to do. State Senator Gary Winfield has a long history of reshaping conversations around criminal justice, a passion that grew out of his childhood in the Bronx, a father succumbing to drugs and watching his mom struggle as a single mother. And every day that drive for social justice is fueled by what he hears in his community. With people just kind of saying, keep going, uh, don't stop fighting, this is what you've been doing this whole time, now is, now is the time, and don't let anybody deter you from doing the work that you're doing. And uh, my response to them is thank you, and, and that's exactly what, what I'm going to do. And the New Haven-based legislator who chairs the Judiciary Committee says the time for real police reform is now. Some of the things that come right out of the, the, the event in um, uh, Minneapolis when uh, Mr. Floyd's life was taken, uh, prohibiting chokeholds, a duty to an intervene and uh, report, those kind of things. Uh, we're looking at what the use of force actually is uh, and, and how we should uh, rewrite that statute. He says it's also likely legislators will take a look at how investigations are conducted following the use of deadly force by an officer. Right now, it's done by a state's attorney, an office that deals daily with law enforcement. As we start this conversation, uh, one of the things we're looking at doing is having uh, a place for an investigation that is independent in a way that uh, we have not had it so far. Winfield says that could be an independent investigator or an inspector general. Another thought is that certain complaints against police could be funneled to a central office where they're reviewed as opposed to each department. We are, are looking for uh, getting to a place where uh, people can believe that uh, when an action is taken by an officer, that is an action that should not be taken, that there exists a possibility for real consequences. From the rallies to the marches spread across the state, Winfield says we've reached a moment. But if it's to become something more, it needs to be at the state capitol where changes are made. Many of my colleagues feel like we can do things we've never done before. Um, and, and I hope that's correct. Uh, many of my colleagues are willing to engage in this discussion when they may not have been willing to before. In a letter to both Democratic and Republican leaders, Governor Lamont wants them to address the issue of police reform rather quickly and preferably in a bipartisan manner, saying he won't call them back for a special session until there is sufficient support in both chambers. What has been said here is if people can come to an agreement about saving those black lives, then we will, and if they can't, we won't. To me, that in and of itself is problematic. Winfield stresses there's nothing wrong with bipartisanship and consensus, but he says that's not what's important here. You can't say to somebody that you're 92 percent protected. You can't say to somebody that uh, we'll get back to the rest of that later. And so I think what we need to do is endeavor to do the most comprehensive piece of legislation that we can. What I hope is that um, whatever we pass uh, is really significant really makes a change and makes an officer think twice about their actions. With the Mobile Newsroom, Matt McFarland, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.